News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-9227. That's 800-288-WBAP. Um, we have insanity at our border, but we have very, very serious um, terrorism going on via our border, and it will strike us. Uh, we have several things to talk about in this. Um, we have this, the DHS, this is from uh, an exclusive report by NBC News that came out in the past 24 hours. DHS identifies over 400 illegals brought in by the United States. Um, they were brought in by ISIS-affiliated human smuggling network. Over 400 illegals were brought in by these uh, pr- these ISIS uh, terrorist sympathizers, the ISIS smuggling network. 150 have been arrested, over 50 of them. Who the hell knows? We don't know where they are. That's literally what NBC News says. ICE began arresting these illegals several months ago. They never told us. Covering up Joe Biden's uh, invasion, letting in hundreds of terrorists or potential terrorists. Many of the U.S. and Customs Border Protection, many of them were released by our border patrol because they weren't on our watch list. We had no idea who they were. Like, oh, you're fine. Come on in. Because that's, ha- that's what they have to do. When you have millions and millions coming in every year and you cannot keep up with them and you're no longer allowed to stop the gotaways because you're too busy working on the people that are trying to get through legally and you're, you're overwhelmed, they stamp them. There's no, there's no background checks. Um, Tajikistan, these places where they're uh, from ISIS-K, where they're very, very strong. Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, all these are bordering uh, these Stan countries. They all border Afghanistan. This is where all of ISIS-K is. Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Moldova, Kyrgyzstan, Georgia, and Russia. Those are all uh, former uh, Soviet Union republics or part, piece, p- parts of the Soviet Union. These countries are where ISIS-K has been active, NBC News says. The fact that these whereabouts are unknown is alarming, says the former counterterrorism, uh, FBI counterterrorism section chief. Uh, U.S. is scrambling. I'm going to play some audio here. Let me play that first, and I'll get back to uh, what I have on this report that's just stunning. And then I'm going to talk to talk to you about this. Okay, here it is. Some of the overseas facilitators of the smuggling network have ISIS ties uh, that we're very concerned about. The problem is the volume of people coming across the southern border, individuals from ISIS and other affiliated groups have recognized it as a weak point in our defense. And they're using this opportunity to try to sneak in. ISIS-K has claimed responsibility for deadly terror attacks in Russia and Iran in the past year. And recently, the DHS Inspector General sharply criticizing vetting at the U.S. southern border, saying DHS is at risk of admitting dangerous persons into the country or enabling asylum seekers who may pose significant threats to public safety and national security to continue to reside in the United States. This is it. ISIS-K is here. They've been trained. Joe Biden uh, freed them and trained them up by abandoning Afghanistan and not leaving Bagram Air Force Base for us to fight them, uh, keep them neutralized, kill them, etc., interrogate them, capture them. We don't. We don't. Have, we didn't leave behind 2,500 people in Afghanistan. Therefore, ISIS-K is resurgent, is strong. Al-Qaeda is as well. Uh, early this month, also... ISIS arrested eight Tajik men, Tajikistan, in New York, Philadelphia, L.A. for their suspected ISIS affiliation. They had similar arrests of an Uzbek man in Baltimore whose home country alerted the U.S. that he was affiliated with ISIS. He was arrested in April after living in the U.S. for over two years. These people are coming in, they're being approved, and they're living here for a year or two, and then we're scrambling to find them. And Joe Biden's covering it all up. And our DHS secretary, you'll hear from him in a little bit, he, he said, no, everything, in his pedo voice, everything is fine. There's nothing to worry about. Are there any kids around here? Do they want to sit on my lap? Um... I have some questions for you. How much of this is Joe Biden's fault? How much of all this is Joe Biden's fault? All these terrorists running around that he's letting in? They're literally, by the way, the other thing is I learned in these reports, I read so many different reports on this today. They're literally playing the game. All these people that are terrorists or suspected terrorists or possibly could be terrorist risks, they're all saying, I fear, I'm here, I want asylum. They're literally saying everything that Joe Biden's told them to say, that all the illegals say, that they've been told to say by the smugglers. I'm here. I'm in fear of my life uh, from my country. I'm here to claim asylum. And they get it. And they're here. And they're one of the 7.5 million that are waiting to have their hearings 
and uh, they won't be be heard for four, five, six years, and then they won't show up, and they might kill us in the next year or two. There you go. That's it. And you know what the the answer? Like Jerry Nadler was asked about this in the hallways of Congress today. You know what he said? It's a small percentage of the people that come here that are you know of the illegals. The small percentage of them. Well, well, it was, a, it was a small percentage of people that came in here that killed us on nine eleven. It was about nine people. It's all it takes is nine. All it takes is uh, five. How many t- how many uh, ISIS K people shot and killed 145 people and burned down that uh, that uh, uh, that uh, city hall uh, and concert hall in that Russian area there? Um, that was the Crocus Hall Crocus Hall uh, attack in, M- in March. Killed 145 people. Didn't take. There was probably five, ten people there. They were throwing grenades, blowing people like you and me up as we're fleeing the theater, mowing us down with uh, you know AK forty sevens and whatever they were. And there you go. It's going to happen here real soon. Going to happen fast. Okay, Joe, let him in. That's my my take. How and where do you think they're going to strike us? They're here. Joe's let him in. How and where do you think they're going to strike us in America? How much of all this is Joe Biden's fault? And what would you like to see Joe Biden do about this? 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Chime in right now. Line's wide open. Um, the uh, There's also national security risk coming in from Venezuelans and China. I heard a wonderful thing today from uh, Paul Morrow. He was the top New York police for 15 years. He was the top counterterrorism official in the New York police doing all the counterterrorism. You know that's the biggest counterterrorism. They, 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 they are like literally hand in glove with the FBI and uh, the CIA, all of them, because that's the biggest threat is right there. That's where 9-11 happened. They're going to do the same thing. Their counterintelligence is like intel- is incredible. There's counterintelligence outfits with the Chicago police as well. There are, I have connections to people that are, that are working with those types of things there. There are counterterrorism in every major city. There, maybe we don't have it in Dallas. I don't know. Maybe we have it in Houston and Dallas. I don't know. I know they got it going on in Chicago. I know they got it going on in New York. Paul Morrow did this for 15 years. He said, these Venezuelans, the sheer number of them is a national security risk because they are in gangs, all the gangs, the prisons. That is a national security risk. When women and children are being raped and murdered all over this country from those Venezuelans that have been led into this country, that alone is a national security risk. It's, it's killing our people. Uh, China is the same thing. China is having our lunch. Um, what about... Here's another one. Look at this. In April, NBC News reported Afghan named Mohammed Karwin, 48. He was on the U.S. terrorist lot watch list, was let in by Joe Biden's CBP Border Patrol because they didn't have enough information And when he crossed. He spent a year inside of the U.S. Al-Akbar, and guess where he was? Five hours south of us in San Antonio to kill us. To kill us. You understand? This is everywhere. They're here. They're going to kill us. They're going to slaughter. You know what happened in Russia? Just happened in Russia? There was another attack Sunday evening. This is a follow-up to Crocus Hall. This is ISIS-K. This is what they're going to do here. Ready? On one evening, the North Caucasus region, region of Dagestan was rocked by a series of brutal terrorist attacks. My friend wrote today, uh, or one of my uh, tweeters wrote today that I follow, gunmen opened fire in a synagogue in Durbent, graphically slit the throat of a Russian Orthodox priest, Father Nikolay. And they're going to do that to ours. You understand me? They're going to do that to ours. That's going to happen. They're going to slit the throat of one of our uh, cloak leaders, and they're going to attack Jewish and Christian. They attack Jewish and Christian houses of worship in Dagestan's largest city. God forbid how I can pronounce this. Maklakachaka. I don't know how to pronounce it. All right, Maklakachaka. These brutal crimes claim the lives of at least fifteen people, including police officers. It's coming. They're here. They're going to slit the throat of our people, and that's going to happen. That's just how it is. That's what they do. And uh, next, I'm going to share with you. Um, what the Special Operators Association of America, they're members of every, uh, all the top ones, SEALs, Marine Raiders, Air Force Commandos, Green Berets, uh, Army Rangers, all of them. And they released a a letter on this today, and it's not good for Joe Biden, and Trump should uh, bring that up. Also, whatever happened to the illegal that Joe Biden let in that was a Jordanian border cross who attacked a Quantico base, rammed it with 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 a vehicle to try to break into it. Uh, they're covering that one up. I'll tell you what's the latest is on that, too. Coming up next, your call at 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. How much of this is Joe Biden's fault? How and where do you think they're going to strike us in America? All these uh, terrorist illegals that Joe Biden has let in. And what would you like to see Joe Biden do about this? All right. That's next on the Chris Crock Show on New Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3.
News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. Okay. From from uh, the Special Operations Association of America, I had no idea there was something. And uh, the SOAA, and uh, I'll just read a couple. I, it's a it's a one page letter, but I highlighted about uh, two and a half paragraphs, about half of it or less. Um, the SOAA. They call it an open letter of concern. The SOAA represents thousands of Army Rangers, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, Marine Raiders, Air Force Commanders, Commandos, and other special operators who have fought and currently serve on behalf of our nation. We are gravely concerned by the current heightened risk of terrorist attacks against targets inside of the U.S. and both U.S. and allied interests abroad. Our complete withdrawal from Afghanistan without a viable stay behind or over the horizon counterterrorism and intelligence capability to suppress threats has created a vast Vacuum in the region in which anti American terrorist groups such as Al Qaeda and the Islamic State are flourishing once again. You hear this? They're laying it out there. They care because they're dying and their comrades are dying and they're killing these bastards in the trenches and they're nope, they know what's coming and they know what's here. And they work hard to stop it. And they love our country. They sacrifice everything. They they destroy their lives and everything to do what they do for us. They are literally putting their lives on a millstone and grinding it in. And uh, they need all of our help, prayers, and support when they come home. They are our protectors. I'll continue on. The United States has lost significant intelligence collection capability in the region, leaving federal authorities blind and deaf to emerging threats emanating from the region. So what what they're laying out here is Joe Biden uh, took us out of Afghanistan completely with no plan. He left us high and dry. It's made ISIS-K and Al-Qaeda strong again, like way strong again, okay? And number two, Joe Biden lies and uses a term that nobody knows what it means. Over the horizon technology. They say we don't have that because there's no base there and we don't have any base near. So we have to fly these freaking, uh, uh, what do you call it, drones, like uh, uh, 20 to 40 hours, some insane, they can go and they can fly around for like uh, five, six hours, they got to go back. Because they can't, we have no bases anywhere. We literally were right next to, um, we were literally right uh, in Afghanistan is is neighbor neighbors Iran, uh, Afghanistan would would, would would with Bagram Air Force Base. It was a state of the art one billion dollar Air Force Base with thousands of ISIS K and um, Al Qaeda prisoners that Joe released. One of them, as I said, went and killed our people the next day or two days later at Abbey Gate. Killed those thirteen soldiers. Blew everything up. But we would have been able to hold them still and done counterterrorism operations, 2,500 troops safe in the wire, behind the wire, and would only go out to do nice little strikes to kill the bastards out in the, in the theater. You understand? And to stop ISIS-K and to stop uh, Al-Qaeda. Instead, Joe has destroyed that. I can't scream enough for uh, how, how I feel that way, but I, I can't, so I, I won't. They don't want me doing that, and I understand. You don't want me screaming at you either. This risk is compounded by developments in the Middle East, and I'm reading their letter now, continuing on. This risk is compounded by developments in the Middle East and by the porous, unsecured southern border through which we have seen numerous instances of individuals on terrorist watch lists and others from adversarial countries attempt to enter the U.S. And those are the ones we know only know about because they were detected. We do not know how many other terrorists are already currently inside of the U.S. See this? They're all warning us. It's here. It's happening. Lastly, as the former d- director for the CIA said, Mike Morrell recently wrote, quote, the terrors and warning lights are blinking red again, echoes of the romp to 9-11. That's it. And they're just, they're giving it out there. And I, this letter is on my Twitter feed. Don't look for it. Just retweet it or get it and share it however you want. Go to my Twitter feed, at Chris Croc Show. That's at Chris Croc Show. And follow me, C H R I S Chris C H R I S K R O K Croc uh, Show, um, and follow me there on Facebook and on Twitter. Eight hundred two eight eight W B A P is our number. Eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. What else do I have? I have another thing. You remember the Jordanian uh, illegal that Joe Biden let in? The government is withholding the name of the Jordanian border crosser who attacked our Quantico base, our Marine Quantico base. 
He is um, one of two illegal Jordanian nationals. They illegally crossed the southwest border, at least one of the two. On May 3rd of this year, tried to ram a box truck into the Quantico Marine Corps base, citing as grounds that their personal privacy outweighs. Listen to this. This is why Joe Biden's not letting us know who they are. He doesn't want us to know anything. Citing as grounds that their personal privacy, two Jordanian illegals, their personal privacy outweighs the minimal public interest in knowing who they are, according to the government letter on a FOIA, Freedom from Re- of Information request. Can you believe this? Joe lets in terrorists. They tried to ram with a box truck our Marine Quantico base and uh, in D.C. or Virginia, wherever it is in, in that area. And uh, Joe says, we can't share the names of these two Jordanian illegals who are trying to break into our base and probably blow it up or kill us. We, it's, their privacy is important. We let them in. They try to kill our people and, and uh, ram through our base. Their privacy is more important than yours. Screw you. Shut up. And when an attack happens in six months to a year or two and five, 500 are killed or 5,000 or uh, 300 at a church, you know what? We're going to blame Trump. It's all Trump's fault. And remember that. This is Trump. Trump did not have a policy for Afghanistan. It's his fault, not Joe's. This is all they're going to do. And all. meanwhile... They've, uh, they're destroying our country where our girls are being killed and raped. Terrorists are com- coming in and they're going to do a spectacular attack. And that's just going to happen. It's not if, but when. Next, I love this. EV owners regret their uh, buying an EV part. Duh, part two. Damning, damning stuff that came out from the Wall Street Journal's Alyssa Finley that I did not share with you yet. It's incredible. And I will ask you. If you would consider owning an EV after all this new information I'll share with you. And um, if you do own one, do you regret owning uh, an EV? Which is what half of the young people that own them now say they regret. They want their gas car back. If you're having trouble sleeping, ask your doctor about Bidenica, the sleep aid made from 100% Joe Biden press conference. The best way to get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to... Anyway... Bidenica has a patented blend of confusion and forgetfulness that will calm the most overactive brains. COVID has taken this year, just since the outbreak, has taken more than 100 years. Look, here's the lives. It's just, it's, I mean, you think about it. When they sold out American jobs and killed the Keystone Pipeline, it kept me up all night worrying about how we pay our bills. But then I got Bidenica, and I've never slept better. Sometimes when I get hopped up on sugar, my parents give me Bidenica so I pass out. Other times they give it to me during the day, probably so they can do the deed. Gross. Warning. People who have used Bidenica have experienced rapid lying and an inability to secure the southern border. Others have hallucinated and fought breakfast. Breakfast cereals. Corn Pop was a bad dude. Ask your doctor if Bidenica is right for you. Well, there you go. That's a new ad. You like that one? It's on my social media feed. Uh, follow me on the Chris Croc Show at Chris Croc Show. I should say that's at Chris Croc Show. Okay. Alyssa Finley, Wall Street Journal, longtime Wall Street Journal columnist, went even further on the electric vehicle uh, survey that just came in. It's so bad Um, from McKinsey & Co., which is definitely a a super leftist, woke uh, Democrat stronghold. That's where uh, Mayor Pete worked before he became uh, such a success destroying our energy, uh, what do you call it, our uh, transportation department. But let me share. There's a, a new survey from McKinsey that, that shows 57%, almost 60% of American millennial EV owners say they are likely to switch back to a gas-powered car. Almost 6 in 10 young EV owners are likely to switch back to a gas car. Isn't that incredible? Why? You have to charge your EV at home. Difficulties charging on the road and the high cost of ownership. There's so many things in here I never knew. I read this column last night when I got home in the Wall Street Journal. I'm like, I have to share this with you. Here it is. Insuring an EV costs $44 a month more than insuring a gas-powered car. Can you do the math, uh, uh, Producer Garrett, on 44 times 12? That's a, nowadays, that's a lot. Can you, it's a $44 a month payment. Do you want to add another payment to your uh, to five hundred twenty eight thousand a year tax right there five twenty eight just 
to insure. Okay. Second of all, rising electric rates over the past few years, thanks to Biden, have neglected. They've totally negated any fuel savings. You will not save money by charging it versus gasoline. Period. Also, uh, in Anderson Economic Group, she said uh, an Anderson Economic Group study found it's cheaper to fuel most gas-powered cars than it is to power EVs. So now you're paying more to po- to fuel your car uh, with an EV than you are with gas. Boom. That's done. Second of all, listen to this. I had no idea. If you own a home, you may be surprised to learn that upgrading your EV wiring to accommodate your uh, a charger, it costs thousands of dollars. So if you want to charge your EV in your house, you have to spend thousands of dollars more just to charge it at home. Well, I can charge it every night when I go home for eight to ten hours. Eh. Unless you've got thousands of dollars to wire in a charger to your home, you're screwed. If you don't own a home and don't have thousands of dollars to buy a charger for your home, you'll be stuck charging a commercial station where rates are higher. And finding an available one that works for you can be tough. It can take more than 10 hours to charge that fully ba- full battery. Although, guess what? Here's another. You, you can't believe all these hoop, hoops and obstacles. Look at this. Charging your EV battery above 80% of its capacity which you'd think you'd want to charge it all the way, right? If you charge it above 80%, it degrades the battery more quickly. Now you can spend ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a battery in less than five years, maybe four years, because you fully charged every time. Hey, 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 there's more. Let me ask you, I'm just getting started on these amazing factoids I didn't even know about so many of them. This is why these all these people that own EVs don't want them anymore. I want to buy a gas car. Listen, here's my questions for you. Chime in right now, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227 at 10.39 p.m. Uh, Wednesday night, the night before the debate. Would you consider owning an EV after all this new information? And if you do own one, do you regret getting your EV? 800-288-WBAP is our number. Chime in right now. Line's wide open. 800-288-9227. I'm going to continue on. Um, <clears throat> uh, they do say that, uh, the, so you have 60% of all young people basically don't want to get EV. They want to get a gas car again. They want to trade in their EV for a gas car. She, they say She says maybe the numbers aren't so bad with seniors because they have the money to wire their houses, thousands of dollars to wire it at home to charge it, and they don't mind waiting eight hours to charge something because they don't drive around all the time at night. She continues on, EVs lose their resale value more quickly than gas-powered cars, so you're going to pay ten grand or more Uh, for the car brand new or used. And then guess what else? You resale, you lose more on your resale than gas-powered cars. My gas-powered car is so much more valuable than your EV is, period, Uh, a year or two or five years later. Batteries alone can cost tens of thousands of dollars to replace. Tens of thousands. So 20, 30,000. How about that? You looking forward to that? In addition, a glut, listen to this. I didn't know this. A glut of used and new EVs on the market has recently caused their resale values to plunge. So if you want to buy, if you buy an EV, when you go to resell it, you're going to lose more and more money. You're going to lose your, you know what, your butt on resale value compared to my gas car. There's a glut of them. They're sitting all over the place. Nobody wants them anymore. Continuing on. I didn't know that, by the way. Over the past year, Finley writes in the Wall Street Journal today, prices for EVs have fallen by 30 to 40 percent, 10 times as much as used gas power cars. So you're going to lose 30 to 40 percent more, 10 times more than your gas powered car, power, uh, gas powered car does. That's amazing. This is incredible stuff. This is why I just I kept reading it almost the whole article I wanted to highlight. So I'm like, I'm just going to share it with you. A young investment banker boasted to me, she says, a couple years ago about his new Tesla purchase was a smart investment because inflation would only cause an increase in value. Not a savvy bet. Jim in Fort uh, Fort Worth, I should say. Hi, WBAP. Howdy. We used to have a hybrid that we, oh, we bought back in 2016 and sold it for a lot of the reasons that you've been commenting on. Really? And won't go a hybrid? It, yes. Yes. I thought those were okay. I'm, I'm not saying they are either, by the way. Tell me why they're not. What, what did you have, if I may ask, and tell me why why they're not okay? We had a Chevy Volt, and it, it worked. It was you know it was a, a decent car, but for all the reasons that you're talking about, 
we got rid of it. It was the insurance cost was actually double <gasps> on another vehicle. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And the the cost to charge it um, was you know the price point wasn't there any longer with the price of so you're now energy. losing or breaking even or losing compared to gas. You're saying correct. Wow. Correct. Wow. And then the the, the tax that they're going to put, which we didn't have an, uh, an issue with the tax. Yeah, because you guys, uh, you, your cars are twice the weight of the same kind of car and for EVs, and uh, they're ruining the roads worse because they're double the weight. Right, and mm-hmm. we didn't have a problem with paying a tax because right. we're getting away with, you know, partially not paying a gasoline tax. But the the cost that they were going to charge us was when we ran the numbers on it, the the gas tax that we pay on our, our car. V8 sports car yeah. is almost half of what the EV tax is going to be. Yep, because because literally your small EV is destroying the roads more than your midsize or regular size EV uh, SUV. Yes. Yeah. Right, and basically what broke broke the camel's back with it was that tax because now we're getting triple tax on the car. Number one, from the energy that we're paying to charge it, the gasoline tax that we put in it, and now the the road tax. Right. So you're double your insurance cost for the EV, or the uh, what was it again? It was a uh, hybrid. You're double the insurance cost. Correct. You're um, not breaking. You're not sending. You're not saving money on energy costs for to power the vehicle or fuel it. And the gas tax that you should pay, as you agree, is going to be more so than it would be. So you're losing on every angle. Did you ask them why it's so expensive for insurance, why it doubled for uh, your uh, EV or your uh, uh, hybrid? Well, what we've been told was even a minor fender bender. If there's any damage yep. to the battery, whatsoever. that's exactly what it is. That's it. Minor fender, a, a, a Rivian minor fender bender bender was like, I swear to you, it was like, you, you, Google it. Uh, there's a, uh, please for me, producer Garrett, there's a Rivian fender bender. It was like 42 grand for a Rivian fender bender. It was like 42 or 48 grand. Uh, you'll see it. It comes up all over. A guy, guy wrote a whole thing on it. It was his Rivian. He got a fender bender. He could not believe it. What was it? 42 or 48? 42 grand. Fender bender, Rivian. Fender bender. That's where your insurance goes way up. You're screwed. There you go. Great call, Jim. All right, Russ and Flower Mound. Uh, Russ, uh, um, I, I want to ask you to hold. Can you hold, brother? I want to hear you. you own an EV. You may agree with me. You may not. Can you stand by, brother? I don't want to rush you, but I got I to gotta break for a moment. Take a break. Good, brother. You stand right by. I don't know. When I like it, I don't know if he agrees or doesn't uh, disagrees. This will be fascinating. Next. New Star K20 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Asking you these questions. Would you consider owning an EVL after all this new information showing how it's much more costly and you lose a lot more when you have an EV? Uh, the more expensive to have, maintain, charge, and everything. And if you own one... Do you regret owning an EV, getting one? Uh, we have an EV owner on one sec, Russ and Flower Mound, but I wanted to give you these details real fast. Here's a brand new one, then a quick recap. Um, this is from analyst uh, Carl Brewer of IC Cars, an online car marketplace. Quote, it's clear used car shoppers will no longer pay a premium for electric vehicles and in fact consider electric powertrains a detractor, making them less desirable and less valuable than traditional you know, gas models. Also, um, costs on average more than $44 a month for insuring an EV than it would be a gas car. Uh, high repair costs, high component costs are partially to blame. Rising electric rates also now negate any fuel savings. Uh, Anderson Economic Group study found it's cheaper to fuel most gas power cars than it is EVs. If you own a home to upgrade your electric wiring, you have to spend thousands, several thousand dollars to charge it at home. If you don't own a home, you have to charge a commercial station. Rates are higher. Finding one that works very tough can be very tough. 10 hours to charge a battery full, but if you do it over 80%, you will degrade the battery more quickly. EVs lose their resale much more quickly than gas-powered cars because their batteries are more easily damaged and degraded. Over the past year, prices for used EVs have fallen by 30 to 39%, 10 times as much as gas-powered cars. Russ in Flower Mound, talk to me, Hoss. You own an EV. What do you own, and what do you think about all this, and what, what, what are your thoughts? Well, Chris, I own a 2023 Chevy Bolt. Okay. It's a B. And uh, I've had prior to this, I had a hybrid. And prior to that, I had a gas engine. But when it came down to getting into the full electric, 
it came down to the the bottom line. It came down to the monthly payment and negotiating with the dealerships. I was looking to get into another hybrid. Um, I was happy with the hybrid I had before, but then the dealership was trying to tack on a fifteen thousand dollar markup what the heck? just to get into the hybrid. Let me ask you a quick question. When did you get this uh, EV? When did you do this purchase you're talking about? Just curious. uh, It would be a year ago this past January. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, sir. So GM at the time uh, was trying to run a promotion uh, because, you know, they ran into a problem with the battery packs with the Chevy Bolt. Mm -hmm. They fixed that issue. And yeah, you uh, see a crisis time, and you see wisely an opportunity, perhaps, to get a better exactly. deal. Exactly. Right, right. And I know I, I listened to what you were saying, and, and you made some true valid points in regards to the cost of install and stuff like that. But it, what GM was doing at the time. Quickly, if I may, it, th- these aren't yeah. my points. These are stunning things I read in a column in the Wall Street Journal today from Alyssa Finley. I was like, holy crap, I didn't know half, three fourths of these. It's amazing. Go ahead, sir. Right. So as a as, you know, a good shopper, you want to make sure you're getting the best deal. Yes. Well, obviously, the one dealership, they pushed me away when they were trying to do it a $15,000 markup on a vehicle just because it was a hybrid. Yeah. So that's stupid. Right. So with uh, GM, uh, they were offering uh, the Bolt with um, your $7,500 tax credit. Yes. And they were throwing in a level two charger that they were going to pay to have installed to your home. Okay. And that's a level two, not a level one. What is that? I don't know what that means. DEFCON okay, so, 5, DEFCON 3. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, so a level one would be like your, uh, what you plug your toaster in in the morning. Okay. Just a regular outlet. Okay. But a level two is kind of like what your oven or dryer would be. Okay. So, so in essence, you're really cutting your charge time in half by having... A level two. Okay. How long does it get to vo- get a full charge on that then? How many, 10 hours, eight hours, six hours, what? I, um, I typically get, now I charge mine to about 90%, and it goes anywhere, depending on the outside temperature, um, you know, whether it be winter or summer, it can go from anywhere from uh, five hours to seven hours. What do you say when you now find out that your car is worth a lot less used than um, a gas-powered car? And what do you say to the fact that you're not saving on energy prices anymore and that your repair is cheaper, it was more expensive, and your insurance is more expensive, and uh, you'll lose more in resale than you will with a, a, the gas power? What do you say to all that? Well, how I compensate for that, first of all, I've never seen a major increase on my insurance. Um, So that's been a plus. Uh, As far as the resale aspect, one of the things that I do, Chris, is I lease my car. Oh, you lease this car? I lease it. Oh, well, that's a totally different ballgame, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't take a worry about the depreciation. Okay. You know, so. And then battery, you don't have to replace. You're leasing it because you don't own it, so therefore you don't have to buy a new battery for it. I don't have to do anything. Do you know what it costs for a battery on that car? So you're leasing. It's all, to me, it's not even the same. Does that make sense? Like, Because this whole thing is about owning, not leasing. I, I don't know about right. leasing. So but would I, you dare own this car based on everything we've talked about? You know, I probably, as I go into the next one, whether I go into another fully electric or a hybrid or even a gas engine, it's going to come down to the bottom dollar. Of what my payments. So are. you you would get what you will get a gas car if it's better for you. You don't care about that. You're not about this environmental crap because that's BS anyways. You're about what's best for you. Period. As a consumer, right? Exactly. Yeah, and that's that's good. Okay. Um. So, but would you ever consider buying it though? No, because I really enjoy not having to worry about paying for maintenance. I right. never pay for oil changes with the gas powered cars. Right. I right. always negotiated that with the uh, the lease and with an electric okay. car. I got nothing on it. I got to roll. Uh, but last thing, yes or no, would you ever, if you were paying cash for it and you had to buy it, you know what I mean? Would you buy EV or would you buy uh, gas just if you had to see one or the other? Um, you know, it'd be a toss up, bud, because really I've had no bad experience with okay. any one of those okay. three. But if you, did you find out, by the way, I got to go like so fast, but did you find out how much your battery would be to replace if you were to buy it? I mean, it, that's got to be 10, 20, 30 grand, that is what I mean. Actually, hearing. I believe this particular, and then again, yeah. they've changed the battery yes. pack. I yes. think it's around eight. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I pre- that's a lot of maintenance. That's probably the whole life of the car's maintenance for normal cars. But th- I'm not arguing with you because you don't even own it. So thanks, brother.